Since the dawn of time, engineers have struggled to hold things up. The Temple of Artemis may have been one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, but its vast roof needed over a hundred columns. What? <laughs> to stop it caving in. You. The Romans decided to go lightweight, the Colosseum's huge ring of awnings protecting spectators. Mm. But sadly, not those centre stage. We're on strike. The solution for the stadium in Arlington would actually come courtesy of a construction conundrum faced during the 19th century in the Portuguese city of Porto. In 1875, engineers were building a new rail line between Lisbon and Porto. But when they arrived here on the banks of the Douro River, their progress ground to a halt. At the time, a span of this size was considered extremely challenging. And so a bold and innovative new approach to bridge design was required. With his specialist skills in metal structural work, French engineer Gustave Eiffel was commissioned to tackle the 160-metre void. Now, the challenges that Eiffel faced in building his span were just immense. In addition to the width of the span, the river is also very fast flowing. It's up to 20 metres deep in flood season, and this meant that it was impossible to put piers in the water. With no obvious way to support the bridge, Eiffel proposed an audacious solution. An enormous single arch built into the sides of the riverbank. An arch on this scale seemed an impossible task, but Eiffel proved everyone wrong. And this is the result of his achievement. Isn't it an exquisite example of engineering? In order to make this a reality, however, Eiffel had to completely rethink arch design. Now for bridges, the arch is actually a really brilliant shape, but it does have its limits. And I can illustrate that using this piece of card. If I place this card between two stones that represent the bridge abutments, and I place a load on it, it supports that load using compression, and the compression flows down through the arch and into the abutments. But of course, in a location like we have here, where we need a much larger span, we have to increase the length of our span, and our arch becomes much more shallow, and then the forces of tension start to take over. And as my structure is loaded, you can see that it struggles to support that load. And this was precisely the problem that Eiffel faced here at the Duro. Solid reinforcement would simply make the arch too heavy. But Eiffel came up with an inspired alternative. Definitely reconsidering my shoe choice for today. Bad choice of shoes today. Luke is heading into the heart of the solution. So here I am dangling halfway up of Eiffel's magnificent arch structure. And I have to say, it's a real privilege to be able to do this. The secret of Eiffel's success was to harness the strength of another simple shape within a network of open trusses. And looking at the structure, you can see all the different elements of the truss, all the different parts holding the bridge up. And by making use of a simple system of triangles, Eiffel was able to create a structure that was both light and very strong and stable and had a bigger span than ever before. And it's a real marvel of engineering. Simply genius. So to understand how this truss system works, we can make a simple comparison between two shapes that are commonly found in engineering. If we look first at the square, you can see that if I push down on it, it doesn't take long until that square deforms and collapses. And that's because the square lacks inherent stability and rigidity. But you can see if I take this triangle and I apply a vertical load to it, you can see that it's able to take that load. And that's because these two side elements go into compression, this bottom element goes into tension, and there's equilibrium created at the point where I'm applying the load. By exploiting simple physics, Eiffel's trust arch created engineering history by spanning the greatest distance of its age. 
Eiffel's experiences here ultimately provided him with the engineering knowledge and techniques to go on to create his most famous structure, the Eiffel Tower. Not only that, but in creating this, he helped to completely redefine arch construction. And today, arches form critical parts of some of the most impressive and iconic structures all around the world.